open up businesses there. These are the things that we manage uh, as a consultant companies in uh, Singapore. So, so this basically this Zoom networking is something that we are doing uh, in order to to not stop this particular uh, things that we are doing, and also to ensure that uh, everyone have a chance to still connect with our friends from Malaysia, Indonesia, and Philippines and Thailand. So these are all the initiatives that is done. And let me go to Torch Tutors. Uh, Torch Tutors is something that we are also looking to expand uh, our office overseas, where we are also looking into China market to open up English lesson, enrichment lessons, uh, means uh, to via Zoom uh, and also in order to give people some kind of, uh, I mean, people in China to understand more about English as uh, English is one of the international language. So these are the things that we do. And as for foundation, let me explain further. Uh, we are doing some organization like the recent Urban Haile uh, Haji where we distribute all our meats from uh, some of the uh, donors that we send to all the needy families uh, to actually uh, to uh, I mean to, uh, to ease their burden during these difficult times. I mean, everyone is affected uh, due to COVID. And so these are one of the initiatives that is done by Trust Foundation. We are also looking to work with more uh, or donors uh, to donate some for our Touch Foundation. And also, uh, we are looking to facilities management where we do other kinds of services. So basically, these are the things that uh, Touch Group is doing. And, and we are looking into uh, working with everyone from the Zoom networking session. Again, I want to thank everyone uh, for coming down for this event, for this uh, Zoom networking session. So, Okay, now we can start our uh, Zoom networking with our uh, moderator, Siraj, and also the first speaker. All right. Uh, okay. Hi, guys. I hope uh, I can, you guys can hear me well and clear and can see me too. Yeah, so if, there's, if anyone cannot, cannot uh, hear or uh, can't see my image, do share. Ah, all right. Kamal Nasa, for sure. I can see you too, all the way from Jakarta, huh? Kamal. Uh, see, even your... Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. <laughs> even your third attache from uh, Indonesia to Singapore is also here. Uh -huh. So, good to see Indonesians from the corporate to the diplomatic mission is supportive of... I see uh, SMCCI, I see, you know, uh, established uh, business leaders, uh, people from Malaysia like Ain, Iman driving. Uh, driving pun dia on. Uh. Okay, that's good. Uh, that's good to see quite a few of us all around here. Oh, there's another one driving. Oh, haha, Mr. Parumat. So the, uh, there's, it seems like a, there's a race going on. Uh. 
Okay, all right. And yeah, so great to see uh, lots of uh, our community here today. And uh, even then also those who are involved maybe in other things or so, but they are here with us, not an issue. I also realized just recently, uh, someone was sharing with me, uh, hey bro, uh, it was quite heartwarming. Eh? So he said, bro, I actually uh, do follow your your talk, uh, your, your networking session, but through Facebook, uh, bro, it's easier to take down notes from there. And uh, I can watch it whenever I, I got time. Uh. I can pause and watch, pause and watch. So I said, well, really? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, mean I, I just got to be humble also at the same time. I said, really, you can get some point note taking, you know, note taking and all that. I said, well, really, can you take notes? And I said, yeah, bro, got, got a few, got a lot of uh, learning uh, opportunities. Uh, just got to listen for them. I said, well, thank you so much. I think that's good, lah, you know. Uh, and that's what we should actually um, uh, practice. Because there's always uh, something new to learn. Although we are veterans or we are, we are rookies, we are new guys or, or, or seasoned, there's always something to, to, to learn from. So as we go along, we have covered quite a few, I would say, basic bread and butter issues. But, but still important because before we get our basics, uh, we can't go on before we get our basics right. So we went on with... Uh, let me just see whether I can. Maybe later I can change my image. Um, before we go on to the to the more to the more advanced stage, we still need to know our our logistics, our corporate secretary, our legal. Uh, what else did we cover? A digital media. I think there was one session on it. So we need to have all these things before we can advance because these are your basic things. And so recently it came on, on board uh, about a couple of about a month ago uh, where we met uh, from a, a mutual friend also an associate. Uh, she's now in GeoWorks, uh, an agency with the SLA Singapore Land Authority. And she was sharing with us, I mean, she and a couple of colleagues, uh, probably they are around here today also, sharing about geospatial technology. I was like, is this geology, geography, or what geo is this? Uh? Because uh, both subjects also, I didn't do well uh, in, in, my, in my school last time. Okay, So they were telling me uh, how, again, back to data. Uh, data, how we need to use this kind of data to make important business decisions. For example, they, they asked me, uh, they, they, they questioned me actually. They said, which area is the best place to open up an office? Or open up a restaurant? Uh, okay. Target audience, I say, okay, the young, uh, for, for the young, young families. So I said, obviously, I highlighted my hometown. Uh, I say Punggol, uh, which is in the northeastern side of Singapore, a uh, place where there are many young families. And they asked me again, what makes you say that? I uh, that part I lost. I said, because I, I see it uh, from my eyesight. Uh, I see a lot of young families. Uh. What's the data? How many are you talking about? At what time are they moving around? Where are they? How many kids do they have? I couldn't answer all the questions, obviously, because I didn't, uh, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared. I didn't uh, have such data. So they, they further try to promote my um, thought process by saying, then if in that case, how do I spend an investment of about close to 100,000, for example, for an f and kiosk, 100,000, when I don't even have the data right? The data just comes from my heart. Uh, not lah. So that's when they, they started sharing. And we say, okay, this one can be quite useful to, to some of us. In fact, a lot of us. And I say, okay, before we go on with that also, let's, uh, we, we go the nitty gritty, let's have some people who have some experience in this or who have used this before or who have some perspective on this. So let them share a bit. And then subsequently, we ourselves can have our discussion, I mean, together with our experts of the day, uh, and, uh, and ask them questions, and then see how we can actually use this for our business. Again, a uh, special thank you to GeoWorks, part of uh, Singapore Land Authority, for collaborating with us uh, to organize this. In fact, they also have a Geospatial Week in September, 
uh, which they will, uh, we will also share information on it very soon. Okay, before I just keep on talking, I will, I think those who are quite familiar to Zoom networking know that that is my problem. I do stop talking. Uh, let's invite the first uh, speaker. Oh, there you go. That's our first speaker, uh, Dean. Dean Chan. So Dean, uh, well, basically, I, I also just got to know him again based on this topic. It's good, uh, usually, uh, sometimes when there's a new topic, uh, you happen to get to know more people because you didn't know them before that, right? But now you got, before this, Dean got, I wouldn't think uh, Dean would have time to talk to me because he'll be like, uh, he's very busy. There's no common topic, but now I wanted to know more about geospatial, about data and all these things. And he was, uh, he's more than happy to actually share. So let's have uh, Dean around. Uh, is Dean around? I don't know. Yeah. So let's have Dean uh, to share a bit. And, and talk about what his company does and how uh, geospatial or geotechnology does help his company or his perspective about it. Dean, please take it over. Hey, hey sir. Thanks for everything. Hey, no problem, Dean. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm Dean from uh, Versafleet actually. So uh, we specialize in a uh, transport management software company actually. So we specialize in helping businesses optimize uh, and uh, plan the delivery routes and logistics. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna uh, I have some I've read some slides. Uh, I can start sharing. Uh, just to give can, you. A can you share? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I mean the uh, okay, okay, good, good. Yeah, just to give you a quick insight, I mean, we're not here to see. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. It'll be good. It's good to have uh, visuals. Please, Dean. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, basically, basically has been uh, featured in China News Asia uh, with our, some of our clients before, uh, regarding on, on how we basically use geospatial data and improve their businesses. Uh, this part, uh, I would, I'm sure if you Google or go YouTube or whatever, you can find a lot. So, um, um, we don't need to discuss about that. So, so what we're gonna what what we use uh, geospatial data for, uh, mostly for uh, scheduling and op optimization. Uh, we uh, need the inf the location information so that we can uh, use our uh, proprietary algorithm to uh, help businesses plan for the shortest route, the most efficient route, so that they can save costs. Uh, so we help businesses uh, digitalize their last mile operations, and we provide real time updates uh, with all this information that we have. So that when you know, like when you order uh, your food from like Food Panda, you can know when your your delivery, when your when your uh, what do you call it, when where your food is at any point of time. This is basically what we use this information for. So the, the biggest problem with uh, uh, so the supply chain these days is always the last mile segment, and that is where really our uh, our specialty is. All right. So same thing. So coffee, the key features. So we help visualize the orders. So uh, uh, we basically take a, I mean, most people, they use a spreadsheet and a pen and paper or Google Maps to plan everything. But whereas we make things simple and we put everything on the map to you so that you can just have a quick glance on where your customers are. And through that, we do a quick route optimization using our proprietary uh, algorithm to find the most, I mean, we got a few ways to optimize and the most common way of course is to find the, the most cost efficient method. And then we've got a companion app that, our, that the drivers use to not only collect uh, delivery data, meaning like for example, uh, the, the customer's signature, the photo, taking, taking photos of the, the product condition, et cetera. Uh, it can also help them uh, Basically, you can also direct them to the to the next location as, as well. Uh, basically, it's the same thing what I what I was mentioned. So there's of course real time notifications. Um, so so for customers that uh, that okay. So for businesses that uh, have customers picky and they want to know where the uh, where their product is, we have uh, a tracking page and we have live notifications as well through other SMS or email. Uh, to to their uh, customers so that uh, they can provide a better quality of service. So some of the quality quantitative benefits uh, that, that our customers experience 
Uh, using less uh, documents, like they start using less invoices, as I'm sure most in people in the industry, logistics industry, will be very familiar with. Uh, their customer service, they uh, officers, they don't need to make any more. Uh, they don't need to pick up any more random inquiries on where my product is, because there is live notification now. And of course, you, because of that, uh, there are lesser delivery failures because everybody they know that they should stand by at home at this period of time. So, uh, of course, through using our software, uh, there is increased routing efficiency, therefore increased, co uh, increased cost savings. And so, uh, by, and so, therefore, they can take on more jobs uh, and increase their, increase their revenue itself. So data is king, la, and we use and we have uh, we track a whole bunch of data, including things like uh, date and time completed down to the second, uh, the long longitude and latitude of the, uh, the, the the location, the pickup and drop off location, etc. So everything is accounted for, and everything is accountable. Uh, customer service, I already mentioned, they, because of the uh, live notifications, the customer service, uh, the, or rather the service quality of our users that, that our customers face has improved dramatically. And uh, when drivers fall sick, uh, or fall, especially during this period, or during this COVID period, uh, replacements can be easily found because uh, the system plans what it needs to plan and it ignores the driver or rather it doesn't ignore, it makes it easy to for drivers to just take over a task, take over a route without any hassle. Makes handover very easily. And of course we are API ready so we can basically in, uh, integrate to any system that has an open API uh, network. So I mean just a quick track record, uh, one of our key customers uh, is resource well sent to sir. And what, we, what, they, what they use our software for is for the uh, people transport, for the um, uh, staff transport home. And every, uh, every day they, you, they have 2,000 employees having to send home uh, on over various shifts. And uh, they used to use manual planning, uh, pen and paper literally, which resulted in them needing 61 buses. But through using Versafleet, we managed with basically almost half, more than half their, their, their usage and help them save $630,000 every year. And we also have other clients like Canon and Phillips, which they use our software to optimize the uh, uh, retail restocking. Yeah, so through our software, they know which retail outlet one is running low, how to plan, etc. Uh, this is also one of our clients, Shallow Movers. They use uh, our software to, uh, for their, to, to help them uh, plan their e-commerce, etc. And even to some extent, we have, to, some, to an extreme end, right? We are also implemented in like the more rural areas like in India, Chennai specifically. Uh, so this means that our software or our app itself can run in low to no uh, signal countries, countries with low to no mobile signal. Yeah, so we have, a, we have developed a way to make it work. And these are some of our key clients. Lah. No big deal. Uh, so yeah, quick one, done. So this, this is just basically what Vasafli does, uh, very straightforward. And uh, if, I mean, if anyone has any questions or anything, I'll be, I'll be glad to answer, uh, but, but our use case for geospatial data is the most straightforward one I would imagine, uh, whereby we take the, the, the information, we process it, we, and we use this inf information to make our customers' lives better or the businesses' lives easier. So they don't need to hire people to plan anymore. They don't need to uh, worry about training drivers. They don't need to worry about uh, uh, customer service, etc. Yep. So yeah, thanks, thanks for thanks for having me. Uh, so sure. yeah. thanks, Dean. Yes, um, I think that was a bit that was quite uh, insightful. And uh, just to add on, uh, Versa Fleet is actually 
Um, I, I know uh, the founder and a few of uh, the team also. Uh, so they've got presence in uh, Indonesia, Singapore, and Malaysia, and I think some other countries also. Yeah. Uh... But, you know, so so um, and they've been featured uh, in the national news in some of the uh, even the, our national leaders, Singapore national leaders speeches. Uh, the, 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 one of the founders is also uh, Mr. Shamir Rahim, a former president of uh, Singapore Malay Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And uh, what I like about uh, uh, Versa Fleet is actually goes back to um, when I was looking at the slides just now that didn't present it. It's about productivity. Especially like the, one of them was the, about the buses. Yes. Yeah. So See, we have a lot of resources over here. And um, again, it goes back to uh, the data that we have. How much do we know about the amount of resources that we have? Uh, I think a lot of us uh, always focus on just money. Uh, probably sometimes myself also, for sure. But there are other resources that we don't see uh, tangibly, but it's there. And are we actually using these resources well or not? So when 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 this Dean was sharing, um, obviously that there, there is uh, there is data involved, and you know especially in terms of the connectivity, in terms of uh, where who is going where, and at what time. I think that's that's very clear. Okay, thank you, Dean. We'll come back to you. Don't leave first, uh, Dean, just in case. Huh? Sure, sure, sure. Thank yeah. you. So we'll come back to you again with questions from our our. Um, our friends, uh, but subsequently, let's have all the speakers share uh, some information and then we can have more questions to, to ask. Happy okay, to. moving on. Uh, Jeremy. Jeremy, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm over here. Yeah, hi, Jeremy. Siraj here. Okay, Jeremy, uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, a bit about um, Jeremy and Sistema. Obviously, we'll share again more later on. Uh, Systema is known, uh, it's a global company actually. Uh, it has offices in Russia, India, and Singapore. And uh, what I understand is they also do a lot of uh, investments, especially in terms of data, in terms of uh, geospatial technology. Uh, it's a very technology driven company. And Jeremy actually is in charge of. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Huh? <laughs> I understand. Uh, again, when I paraphrase, I might have got it wrong. But uh, Jeremy looks into uh, raising funds or, or investing, not serious, but investing in these kind of companies. So I think Jeremy today, just share more about your work, what you look, how, how was your perspective about it? And this is something that probably, uh, I'm not sure if my, my colleagues have prepped you, but uh, would you would, would system be looking at uh, investing in such companies in geospatial uh, technology companies? Over to you, Jeremy, please. All right, thanks. Uh, yeah, I think I can cover most of uh, your your questions just now. Uh, so maybe I, I prepared some slides to uh, sure, share Jeremy, with the please. Team that's and, nice. Uh, everyone that's attending. So maybe let me uh, share. My yeah, I do share. Do share. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Uh, should be loading. Uh, but I haven't seen it yet. Got it? Mm, no. Ah, it's okay, starting. Maybe it's lagging, yeah. All right, nice, nice. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks. Uh, Siraj, for having me today. Maybe I'll give a brief uh, background about myself uh, and Sistema. So Sistema is a rather large uh, conglomerate uh, from Russia. Um, we, we manage about 2% of the Russian GDP, so both in uh, investments and our portfolio companies. Um, I sit here in Singapore, in our Singapore HQ office. Um, we look a lot into uh, technology investments here in Singapore, and we invest in uh, smart city technology in APEC. So uh, geospatial technology naturally uh, uh, is, is an overarching uh, segment for us. And uh, we typically invest anywhere from uh, $5 million up to pre-IPO level, depending on the type of company. 
that we, we are interested in. Um, so yeah, let, let me just share with you uh, some of the things that we are looking at right now. Um, some of the technology that I share here perhaps is not very relevant to the audience, but maybe it's a, sort of an eye-opener to how far geospatial has gone and how some of these higher tech companies have been using geospatial technology and how um, we hope uh, Singapore and the region uh, in general will, will latch on this new wave and uh, you know, bring your businesses to the next level. So at Sistema, um, we look at geospatial technologies and smart city technology in specific. Um, so this, this will cover areas such as cybersecurity, how to keep your businesses safe, um, industry 4.0, cloud data, smart mobility, 5G as well, and uh, AI uh, kind of software companies. So we, we look at uh, geospatial um, uh, in, in greater detail and we usually split this up in like uh, three different phases. Uh, we call this first order, second order, and third order. This is just a framework that we use as a fund. Of course, uh, other funds are using different kind of uh, uh, frameworks to analyze uh, technologies, but this is what we, what we do. So maybe I'll touch on what is a first order first. Uh, first order gives you basic functions. So you get your geolocation mapping and, and features like that. So it's uh, you using Google Maps, uh, integrating Google Maps into your current uh, systems, into your current business processes. And then you uh, use this to match uh, features in your mobile app or web app. So let me give you some examples. Um, so for example, you're using geospatial uh, to do location tracking. You are tracking your uh, assets. Like for example, some supermarkets right now, they have beacons on their trolleys. Um, so that they can track whenever their logistic trucks drop off a large load of uh, uh, wholesale goods. Um, Singapore Airport is using uh, asset tracking beacons on their trolleys, on the runways as well, and, uh, and on their tarmac. So um, the stuff like this is already going on. Um, personal tracking wearables, uh, now post-COVID, more and more tracking devices available. Uh, more governments are looking into that as well. And of course, cargo tracking. Um, you're talking about uh, shipping aluminium from Indonesia to Singapore. You want to track your container, where it goes, how long it's staying at the port. Um, you're collecting this data for yourself and, and, and to analyze. Uh, that's for location tracking. Uh, of course, I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, uh, there's, there's a lot, a lot more that's, that's going on. Uh, next is uh, another popular use case is uh, navigation. So your Uber, ride sharing, Grab, they're all using navigation uh, and your on-demand deliveries for food, uh, food Panda, uh, Gojek in, in Indonesia, they're all using uh, uh, available navigation tools uh, to integrate into their apps. And then you have last of all, but uh, of course, I'm just touching only about three because of time today, uh, location-based payments. Um, now you have mobile payments. You want to know uh, where your where your customers are spending their money, uh, which outlets are they spending their money at. Uh, there's a lot of geolocation uh, and geospatial technology involved, and uh, marketing. Yeah, you're you're putting your shop front. you 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 are pinning your shop front in Google. You are taking that location. Um, you want to promote your your store in Google and in in other social media platforms, you are using geolocation as well. So these are first order kind of uh, applications, very basic, um, but of course it's going to be uh, almost uh, used everywhere uh, in the next couple of years. But uh, for Sistema, we look at second order and third order geospatial technology, which is uh, slightly more intelligent. We look at how uh, data analysis and artificial intelligence will come in to help elevate businesses even more. So what is, what is uh, processing geospatial data like? So we, we talk about four different stages when we look at data, right? Uh, descriptive, you must know what happened, uh, where are your assets, where are your trucks, where are your people, uh, where are your shops, stuff like that. This is a descriptive level. And then when we have more data and we process them in the next level, it, it, that's where we come with predictive. We know where problems are going to happen. 
Um, is there too much traffic here during peak hours? Uh, can we divert traffic away? So that kind of, of uh, uh, feature is, is called predictive. And then you have prescriptive, which is um, now I have too much traffic over here. Uh, can we route them elsewhere and you know have a smoother uh, process? So examples like that. And then finally, optimization is when you really implement the solution to, to, to bring your business uh, uh, and, and, and elevate the, the entire operation. So this is improving business outcomes, you know, using a more smart technology, more uh, insights that your data can bring you. So I'm touching this on a very surface level uh, because of time. But what I want to share is the third order, which is what Sistema is mostly focused on. Um, this is where companies will really take the, 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 the quantum leap and become truly uh, competitive in the market right now. So we are looking at uh, second order stuff, but we add an additional tech platform on top. So what, what does this mean? Um, so for example, we look at uh, cybersecurity. So when you implement cybersecurity uh, with geospatial technology, you can look at geofencing. You can protect um, certain areas of your of your compound or of, of your perimeter with different tiers of cybersecurity uh, features. And then you have location-based protection. Um, anyway, if you have any questions about all this, feel free to ask me afterwards. Um, these are just some of the very high-level stuff that we we see in the market right now. Um, we are bringing technology from Europe, uh, Russia, and China to this part of the world, and also um, regional companies from here to, to uh, those places as well, uh, where we are doing business matching for our companies and helping uh, them find new clients in the different regions. So cybersecurity is one of them that is uh, right now also intensifying uh, geospatial technology implementation. Uh, next, we have uh, integration with Internet of Things. So you see Alexa and all that in your homes, but this is uh, on a very consumer level. What's happening in the industry, uh, industrial segments, you see entire factories now uh, in China with IoT. Uh, every machine has, has a device that is monitoring, is collecting data, um, and some of these factories are very, very big. Uh, they spend 1 km wide, and, and that's, that's perhaps some of the, the smaller ones. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do with uh, that kind of uh, uh, IoT implementation. You are monitoring uh, temperature in, say, your data center. You are using uh, uh, spatial awareness in your factories to build digital twin simulation. Uh, stuff like that as well. So it helps to optimize your tracking of your different assets in your factory. How can I speed up the process or bottlenecks in certain processes? So this is uh, how, how this is implemented right now in factories and uh, on large scale uh, uh, mining, oil and gas. So this one is pretty interesting. It's, it's combining geospatial technology with computer vision. So in this picture, you see that um, uh, on the bottom, you see uh, workers wearing helmets. And then uh, uh, on the, the diagram slightly above, it's uh, the position of all the cameras in the, uh, this particular oil and gas plant um, that, that we, we, we uh, work with. So, um, Right now, technology is able to pinpoint who is not wearing a helmet, where he is in the entire compound. And with facial recognition, I can tell who that person is. So um, we are combining geospatial with a lot of other technology layers to, to do personal tracking, uh, facial monitoring, uh, vehicle tracking. And of course, um, right now we can also use um, this together with drones to detect uh, faults in uh, various compounds, uh, various construction sites and so on and so forth. So I, I'm really just talking about the very surface level stuff. There's a lot going on right now, some of which I can't really uh, disclose yet because of uh, uh, confidentiality. But feel free to ask me some questions later as well. Uh, we are also seeing a larger collaboration with uh, AR and VR 
um, remotely uh, in different countries using geospatial technology. Right now, you can work on a, work on a project together with a person uh, in another country in real time um, using VR and AR. And this some, sometimes uh, incorporate geospatial technology to figure out different distances um, and, and do simulations. Right, and uh, last of all, maybe a good uh, chance to also segue into the next uh, speaker is, is about drones, uh, autonomous vehicles um, that we also see, 5G drones. Uh, we are looking at companies like that as well from, from China and from Russia. Um, they are using geospatial uh, technology to navigate around cities. Um, how do they deliver? How do they um, provide uh, e-commerce, last mile logistics? And this, this technology sometimes require more than one um, uh, feature. They, they need to have autonomous uh, uh, navigation. They need to have um, all sorts of other uh, uh, inputs and uh, data inputs and with 5g you have real time flying as well with zero lag so that's very interesting and and for system all these areas are at the frontier and we are very very excited on, on for, for what's to come so i think today i i, I can only give you a brief uh, rundown of, of what we look at uh, of course not everything is applicable to to the audience today and their businesses but i think it gives a glimpse of what's really at the forefront and and perhaps uh, where their business could possibly go uh, in the next coming years. So um, yeah, this is, this is just my contact. If you want to add me on LinkedIn, feel free to scan that QR code. Uh, we can get connected over there. And if you are interested to know about any of the advanced uh, technology stuff that we use uh, and, 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 and help our companies, feel free to reach out to me as well. Right, so uh, yeah, that's all for me today. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, thank you so much, Jeremy. That's, uh, I think that's not all because there was a lot. You were you were share, you were saying that it's just the surface. Yes, uh, yes, I was, definitely. I was quite blown away. Um, the various components of geospatial, and you thought it was just one part, and you keep going on to the next slide, the next slide, and there's always something else also, which is related to geospatial technology that we do not actually realize. So, um, yeah, to all our other friends, you know, do add Jeremy on LinkedIn. There's already a QR code over there. I think you can type in. In fact, when you think about it, LinkedIn also does uh, use some, some sort of geotechnology where, you know, they, 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 they group people on uh, where they are geographically. And in fact, it becomes uh, easier to search for a particular person in a particular industry, in a particular area. Uh, in fact, that's when also I, I realized that LinkedIn also uh, is another recruitment agency of sorts. So, okay, Jeremy, actually I've got a list of questions. Uh, it's, uh, of course, it's a very comprehensive, a lot of uh, ideas that you mentioned. Uh, but I, I think let's let's move on. Okay. I'll ask more questions. Huh? But later on, I'm sure we have uh, a very interesting time. So, guys, do keep... Uh, uh, do keep do stay tuned because um, there's there's quite a few questions that we can ask our fellow um, experts. Okay, next up we have uh, Jinju. Yeah, I hope I can call you Jinju. Yes, okay, yes, Jinju is there. So Jinju is basically uh, he will share more about his company, the name of the company, and all that. But they are into drones and unmanned uh, autonomous vehicles, something like that. Yeah. So. The whole idea over here, uh, when I was reading the website, you know, uh, not to mention actually when I look at the, the team, uh, uh, Jinju, you have a very happy team. Everyone was smiling with teeth open. <laughs> like, this, I suddenly I feel like, hey, quite, <laughs> this is a positive team. Only got one. One software engineer, and they managed to open teeth. <laughs> so, but in any case, Drew. Guys, like how uh, how nicely Jeremy set it up, you know, hmm. drones is, um, okay, I'm not in an area where hmm. it's not drones, actually fighter jets flying over me, I'm so sorry, yeah, guys. because I'm staying at Pongol, eh? it's just hmm. Pasir Gudang, eh? uh, so they need to round up <laughs> and check whether our borders are in control or something like that, but they do their job, <laughs> no problem, <laughs> but drones, 
you see, um, they are the, the future and uh, they actually get a lot of images, a lot of from entertainment, uh, leisure to military. How, how does geospatial, this kind of data technology and how does it help in your uh, business of drones? So uh, Jinju, right. share about yourself, share about uh, your sure. company and also can how geospatial works. All right. Yeah. Can, can you hear me? Is that yes. is this good? Huh? Okay, great. Do you the rest? All okay. All right. Yeah, good. So, okay. yeah, thanks for the introduction. Um, one correction, drones is not the future. Drones is today. It's here. It's already being used a lot. Late uh, again. And, and late again. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, but, but, that, but I, I hear you. And today I will share a bit more about the kind of the futuristic things as well because we have only 15 minutes of the introduction. So I'll launch in. I'll, I'm going to share my screen as well so that we can get uh, some uh, slides. Hold on now. Huh? Can I just share? Does this work? All right, can you guys see my slides? Yep. Hello? Yep, okay, cool. All right, so today, uh, thanks for the invitation. And today I want to share with you more about, uh, maybe five minutes just about the company and then dive into this uh, topic of low altitude airspace management, which is very much the geospatial uh, focus of the, the, the company. So. Uh, Quick introduction, we are about seven years old now. We have been flying drones, making drones, building drones, doing all sorts of things with drones for the last seven years in Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines. Uh, very much B2B, I'm sorry you guys who buy consumer drones, there's a lot of Chinese drones out of the market right now. Uh, we are very much focused on the government use cases and the enterprise use cases, such as agriculture, forestry, facilities management, oil and gas, telecommunications, construction, mining, home security, you name it, right? So, and, and, it's, and the list is growing, right? So we, we are solving a lot of important use cases in the world, right? So some customers, just to give you a sense, mostly Singapore customers, we do have drones. Some people do ask us as a drone company, what drones do you produce? We do make drones ourselves, but I think what we are more famous for is really the system products that we have, right? So on one side, on the left, you can see that we have uh, products for operators. The Plex Pilot is a free app. You can download it to fly your DJI drones. Uh, Pilots can come to Singapore to get a pilot license. We are one of the very first UATO, I'm an aviation training organization that uh, trains pilots in Singapore to become official drone pilots, right? You can fly beyond Vision Island site with uh, Plex Horizon. You can buy drone insurance through Cover Flight. And for the enterprise sector, we do have uh, AI centric products, right? So like, for example, we help plantations manage their, their plantation by firstly building a map of their plantation in 3D and then making sure that they have a database of all their trees. They actually have the geospatial location of every single tree in their plantation. The same goes to facilities 4.0, like how Jer Jeremy was uh, showing a glimpse of just now. I don't have a screenshot, but his screenshot is actually pretty, pretty good, pretty similar to what we have, which is use computer vision to find cracks and issues in the oil and gas facility, in a building, and so on. So, we're, so in Singapore, for example, we are working a lot with the uh, Building Construction Authority to see if we can spot cracks in the HDBs before they actually TOP for the uh, customers. We also do uh, security. So coverage is the automatically uh, flying system from a dock, right? You know, some drones these days, they, you, 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 if you've seen some videos where some box will open up and then the drone flies out, right? So that's, that's coverage. And we're also building a new product as a result of the pandemic, right? Which is safe distancing, right? Um, we are actually now helping uh, uh, people like M Parks, for example, detect people in the parks and then making sure that people are not crowding together. The latest rule in Singapore is that you do, cannot have more than five people standing at the same place, right? And also there are products for regulators and governments, like for example, the Guerrero Responder is a um, uh, system for uh, AED delivery, right? So if you have suffered from a cardiac arrest, you call 995, or you call the, your emergency number, uh, potentially in the future, a drone will fly to you. So the whole system is all in trial stage right now. No governments are yet uh, ready to deploy them, but they are very, very much a, a re reality. Uh, many countries are doing it as a trial, and as soon you're going to see this as the uh, de facto way of delivering emergency high value things, right? All of this sit on our uh, mother of all platform, Garuda Plex, which is a very extensible drone agnostic platform that we can use to control a variety of different drones and connect to a variety of different AI and, and analytics platforms, right? So that's basically what we do as a company. Uh, but today I think is, is really about the geospatial side. So I want to share with you some new concepts and, and also teach you more about uh, what, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, low, space, low altitude airspace management is about. Now, first, some jargons, right? Uh, if, you have, if you are in the drones industry, you would probably hear about something called beyond visual line of sight. 
right? So what it means is that today, uh, most countries' laws, by default, only allow VLOS flights, visual line of sight flight. Wherever you stand, you hold a transmitter, you look at the drone in the sky, right? That's the, the correct way to fly. If the drone flies too far away, it's illegal. The drone flies behind a building and you don't know, you can't see where the drone is, it's also illegal, right? Despite the fact that actually the drone can still stream video to your transmitter, lah, right? Uh, there's a whole concept of EV loss, which is you, you put spotters around the way, but eventually we're all going to converge into BB loss flight because a lot of use cases such as say food delivery, right? AED delivery, uh, or large compound security, right? Border, border security and so on. You can't have the pilot chase after the drone everywhere, right? In fact, BB loss is very, very common even since the 80s because if you read the news, you will know that Americans, for example, will be flying their drones from Houston or somewhere in America and the drones will be flying over Afghanistan or something, right? But what is really, really coming to us right now is this whole idea of urban air mobility, right? The amount of space we have in a city on a 2D plane is actually not enough, right? We have been digging tunnels and going up and down, right? But there's a lot of airspace that we're not really using, right? You haven't been taking a helicopter to school, right? Or, or, to, or to work. You're, you're, you didn't buy food from Grab Air or something like that, right? So uh, a lot of companies right now are building these very cool looking helicopter-like or drone-like helicopters, depending on how you see it, right? Which, are, which will fly you to work, fly you to schools. And these passenger vehicles are already being launched everywhere, right? China, you have Ehang, you have uh, Volocopter and so on from uh, Germany. Airbus is trying to build something the same, similarly. Uh, and not only just people, there's also a lot of drones right now for delivering products, right? If it, uh, the ones I show you here are mostly e-commerce, right? The, whether they do uh, 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 your Amazon drones, for example, they've already run through a few, few iterations. When all these drones start flying in the sky and delivering uh, people or goods from point A to point B, what you end up if, with is, is a problem of you need a traffic management system. There needs to be a traffic police in the sky. Right? Otherwise, it's going to be madness. And then things are going to start crashing into each other. And everything is going to be falling off the sky and then falling onto what, uh, 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 you and me, right? which is not a good idea. right? So today, we have a lot of rules around airports, for example. It's an aerodrome, you shouldn't fly here and there. We need to have certain systems to you know, broadcast your position and so on. Uh, but ultimately, there's still no one single standard that the world use, like how we have it on the land transport, for example. right? You either drive on the left side of the road or the right side of the road, for example. So how do you then organize the, the sky? How do, how, do, how do you make sure that the sky has uh, uh, the, the same kind of traffic rules that we have in a, in a congested city? There's a lot of research, right? And I, 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 can, def, I, I can go into all, the, all of them, uh, the ones I studied, but there's not enough trial and test. So as a commercial company, what we did was we have trying to make sure that these research, these ideas of how airspace needs to be managed are actually tested within Singapore, right? So what we did was that, this is Singapore, by the way, if you haven't seen, right, this is basically where all the aerodromes are. We have five airports in a very small country and uh, all around the airports you cannot fly and you can see a lot of little small little dots. Those are the sensitive military base or government, uh, 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 government buildings that you also cannot fly. And then there's, there's also a gigantic uh, water catchment area in the middle and so on, right? So in the middle, you see this little tiny green area. That's actually what we call a drone test site, right? So in the one north area in Singapore, we have been, testing and trialing a whole bunch of different new ideas of how we can actually do beyond mission line of sight. Sometimes we use uh, a traditional permit, but we actually use modern systems, right? And we, we invent basically our own idea of airspace, right? So this is just my proposal. This is not, this is not yet an, uh, implemented yet, but just an example of what if we have a different airspace from zero to 50 meters, then from 15 meters, 100 meters, and then beyond that, right? How do we collaborate with the aviation authority? How do we collaborate with the uh, Air Force and so on and the town councils to enable a variety of use cases in the in in the airspace, and not only that, on top of on top of just scaling your operations from V loss to BB loss, so that you can basically sit in the command center and maybe then have the drone deliver your your pizzas to you, right? Is that a lot of the systems are autonomous? So you're also going from one pilot, one drone kind of a environment, which is what we have today, to an environment where you have a command center, which is kind of, uh, we prototype this in our office, right? A big command center. And you can do one pilot, maybe two drones, three drones, four drones, maybe a hundred drones, right? Where all the hundred drones will just fly by itself and the, 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 the operator doesn't have to do much, except if one drone is in trouble, then he will focus on getting the drone out of trouble to emergency landing, right? So these will be other, other potentials for, for it. And there's a lot of, in this topic, basically you need to deconflict everything in the sky, but you also need to deconflict a lot of things that is on the ground. The unique part about Singapore is that 
80 percent of us live in high-rise buildings that, that looks like flats right if you're not familiar with singapore these are what we call hdb flats the ones behind it right that and we, we can't we cannot exceed the height of the flat because it'd be too high you don't need to fly that high there's a lot of space there and also uh, it also exceeds the 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 ceiling of 60 meters that uh, the air force currently sets for the whole country right so there's a lot of things to deconflict and how do we make sure that we deconflict well the easiest way is you have data right so you need basically the entire country's 3d model in order to be able to draw a path around the whole country to say this is where you can fly and you cannot fly right so this is essentially what uh, is is being r and d right now and and there's going to be a lot of work that we're going to be doing together with the Singapore Land Authority. Uh, and uh, they have a thing called Joe, Joe Works. And then next in September, they're going to have a Joe Week. We're going to be demonstrating one of these system where we can use uh, a drone to save your life by delivering an AED to you to, uh, if you suffer from a cardiac arrest, right? But there's this one, there's a lot of geospatial pieces in it because we need to automatically find within the 3D environment that the government have, which is called OneMap 3D, where to land the drone, where's, where's the emergency landing, where is the victim, uh, which is the closest AED drone that we can deploy, and so on and so forth, right? So uh, I think my time is up. So this is all I will present for today. Uh, I will happy to take any questions on any parts about anything about drones, even other use cases uh, after this. All right. Okay, thank you, Jinju. Uh, it was a very good presentation. Various yeah. types of drones. Uh, I like it where you actually uh, corrected me. <laughs> where this is the current state. And what is the future state? Because I, I will be a consumer level kind of person where it is not really exposed to me. Uh, yeah. And uh, things that you shared was probably more or coming from a sci-fi movie. Uh, mm. They thought, yeah, probably it will happen, it might not happen, you know, it's, it's under wraps and stuff like that. So, mm. yeah, and I, I actually, when you share this and you share the one map and things like that, uh, I do notice that, um, especially in Singapore, a lot of things are already on the way in the, in the planning stage. Uh, mm. Only when, basically, that's why when I look at it, uh, as simple mm. as the HBL, home-based learning, it could be the resources ready like within a week or you know, right. but everything was ready in the storage. Yeah. This is the right time to move out. Yeah. You know, so that's like how you mentioned one map being developed, you know, getting ready. There'll be a time very soon, maybe, you know, where it will be rolled out and it's for us to use. So yeah, definitely there's a lot of uh, things that we should be we should be sharing again later. Um right. I'll come back to you again very soon. Thank you, Jinju, again. Okay, next uh, we have uh, Mr. Debajit. Debajit, are you there? Yes. Yes, I am. Debajit. Hi, yeah. how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for making time today uh, uh, to share more about your AI robotics. Uh, I look. Uh, I also had a uh, look at your website. Interesting. Uh, talking about driverless vehicles. Um, and how everything can be controlled within an operating management system. And uh, congrats for um, uh, passing the proof of concept with the Singapore authorities and now developing it further. So without further ado, Mr. Debajit, please share more about AI robotics, share more about yourself and what's, what's going on with this geospatial. I'm really drawn, I'm really like blown away by this time, uh. So please continue. <laughs> Knocking sure, me thank you. The future. Thank you, Mr. Debajit. Thank you. And um, yeah, I am going to share my screen. Please confirm you can see it. All right. So thank you for the opportunity. And I'm excited to introduce AI Robotics. AI Robotics is a deep tech company, a deep tech Singaporean company. We are actualizing self-driving. As you correctly mentioned, it's self-driving and it is truly self-driving, i.e. not assisting a human driver, neither we are trying to human resist a computer. We are building self-driving in its true sense. First of all, let me do a 
sound check and then I will continue with my next slide. Am I audible? Can you all hear me well? Perfect. Now, when it comes to self driving, there are probably, you know, 1000 plus companies that will take you into some yard and show uh, a vehicle going by itself. And when you really start looking deeply into it, you will see there are at least 40 plus big corporations, you know, the famous startups like Zooks and Pony, then the tech giants like Google, automakers like Tesla, who have captured our imagination and have grabbed the news headline for last five, seven, even more than that but definitely in the five to seven years. Whenever we hear self-driving, we associate ourselves with Teslas of the world and Googles of the world through Waymo. However, the level five or truly self-driving and open road, that dream has faded away in the last couple of years. People are struggling with what is known as deep neural network, most of the people that I mentioned, and you see it on the chart, have all gone down the path of solving the driving problem with deep neural networks. In other words, for those who are hearing it for the first time, it is our emulation of how we think the brain works, because we don't know medically how the brain works, how the billions of neurons truly speaking, 100 billion neurons are active at any point of time in a brain, human brain. How does that connect to certain decisions? We are not fully aware. However, we believe, and on that belief, there have been several advances in the last 10 years. And especially with AlphaGo by one of now Google's company, deep neural network or deep learning from deep mind took the stage five years ago and we thought, aha, we got it. However, it has failed to solve the perception problem. Let me take one example. We can go on for a long time, but let me take one example and you will see what I'm talking about. This is not a old example. It is from 2020. It is a company that claims that has the most advanced technology. I am pointing your attention to the left hand bottom part of the slide where you have a stop sign, you recognize it as stop sign. As a human being, the next one you recognize is also as a top stop sign. However, a computer with those black and white tapes on top of the stop sign thought it is a speed limit of 45. That's the latest on deep learning. It has got three major issues. Fragile object perception, as we said. The other issue with deep neural network is it lacks interpretability. You, know, you don't know what causes what. Without further ado, let me tell you just for you know, normal people, between those beautiful labradoodles on the right end of my picture, versus the crispy chicken, fried chicken, computer is unable to make a distinction if it is deep neural network because we train them on images. At pixel level, distortions create a lot of confusion. Now, pioneers are attempting to improve deep learning techniques. When as human being, we are encountering challenges, we always want to go better and do more. So there are a lot of investment and efforts made because we want to solve the perception problem. However, there is another path. We are probably the only one now, but I'm sure there will be others because the deep neural network or deep learning or database training is one way of doing it. And that's probabilistic. You know, the probabilistic approach will always have what you see on the left-hand side in terms of recognizing a human its gender is likely male, it is age, age range is this, versus the deterministic model where you specifically have 
characteristics defined. AI robotics used deterministic approach developed from using first principle and solution. And more importantly, we only used computer vision for our navigation. Now we will get into the details of it in a minute in next slide, but that has two characteristics and I think it is important to understand them. First, it's, it mimics the human action. So we have gone into how a human goes around making a decision when he's moving using his eyes and simply coded it. Therefore, it is rule-based. Rules that mimic human being and therefore it is reproducible. That means every set of input will give Identical set of input will always give the same output. There is no probability involved. So whenever the set of input is this, that, and that, it will give you the output that is rule is saying. It is similar to a human mind and a human eyes. So that gives another characteristic. So we follow landmark to reach from one place to another. One characteristic, two things to remember. One, we have to have a known environment to drive. Some would say that is a strength and some will say that is a weakness. I say it is our characteristic. We should have driven once manually before I send my car automatically. That's number one. Number two, we have only tackled up to 30 kilometers an hour. So these are the two characteristics. If you think about AI robotics, think about these two characteristics. That once we have driven manually, so simply if you have recorded your beautiful tune in your iPhone, you can replay it any, as many times, similar to ours. At least once you should have manually driven around the route you want to be automated. And that brings us to where we can serve. And that's where you know today's discussion, the geofence, the data of geospatial. But first, geofence, because it's limited variability, the environment can be modeled, and we can achieve truly driverless. We are not talking about assisting, as I said before. Our focus is on geofence area opportunity, and we are not going to public road. You mentioned kindly that we have successfully deployed in four different environments now, including passing the, the big endorsement from Citron. Um, there are videos available and I would not take your time today. Those who are interested, please reach us. We'll be very happy to introduce more. Just to give you a very high level idea. So the vehicle is, as far as we are concerned, we are agnostic. So you give me a vehicle, we fit in items bought from the standard shelf and items are computer, camera, and some sensor, depending on the use case. So if it is a port, we may bring in radar, or if it is closed environment in warehouse, we will get proximity sensors. We do not use any sensors that we do not have experience for at least 15 years or so. We are not trying to be the first one to have done something spectacular. All we believe in transportation is remaining safe so that it can be commercialized. With this, what can you do? Actually, if you really think about it, a lot can be done. Warehouse logistics, ports, construction yards, farms, airport terminals. And as you are all aware, 2020 started in a way none of us imagined. And contactless mobility in geofence is becoming a hot topic. We have a lot of eager people that are now waiting to see if this solves what they see as an issue. Now, how is that related to 
data collection, geospatial data. Well, transportation is one of the biggest consumption. You are all doing it already if, through use of map. But in geofence, it takes a next stage because our approach is decisions made are, have to have equity data behind it. Because that's all we are living our computer with. So data collection and analysis is a strategic objective for us. It's mission critical to build the automated mobility in geofence. Conducting route analysis, that means which route would get me faster or finding out where the vehicle is here or there using GPS. And I can go on and on about list of things because we use it at various stages of the movement. So that's really who we are and how we use data to make, again, automated mobility in geofence a reality. Thank you. Questions? Thank you so much, uh, Devajir. Appreciate it a lot. Uh, again, very uh, promising times, uh, especially when uh, I'm very much interested when you say about fitting a vehicle with um, your AI and you can, you can convert it to a driverless uh, vehicle. So that's uh, again something that can be um, uh, useful to many, especially when you talk about people in industries like the logistics companies, um, uh, the, probably the land developers. So again, we'll come back to you later on. Ah, okay, all right, yes. I saw this on your website also. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Devajit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share share a bit more on like for example. Let's go back to, to our first speaker. Let's go back to our first speaker. So we had Dean just now. In fact, uh, guys. I'm just going to share Dean's um, Versa Fleet's um, website and uh, Facebook page. Just a quick one. So we have uh, this Garuda and uh, what was it? Versa Fleet. Yeah. So down here also, you can get information about Versa Fleet. What do they do? Um, and you know, I one thing that is quite common about uh, all of today's speakers and also um, all of today's speakers is basically the idea of this pandemic, this COVID-19 uh, is actually um, assisting or facilitating their technology, especially when you are supposed to, uh, like how uh, Devaji just now mentioned, contactless. That was the key point over there. You need to have contactless uh, technology, uh, especially in times of this pandemic. So I, I will, uh, any one of you guys got any questions for Dean and Versa Fleet, do just shout out, you know, or in fact, for any of the uh, speakers, you know, got any questions before I roll out? Okay, uh, we have Zuraimi. Yeah. Okay, Zuraimi. Yes, uh, thank you very much yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for attending this talk. You know, I, I must uh, congratulate uh, yourself, uh, Siraj, as well as uh, Kai from uh, Torch Group. Uh, you know, it's uh, mind-blowing. Uh, and I'd and, and, uh, just like to share uh, my perspective that uh, the, 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 the last time that I'm hearing whatever that been presented was with the Singularity University. Uh, so I think it, it really touches uh, pretty well. And, 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 and I think... The, the interest that uh, currently I'm having is actually is on the area for the future food. Uh, my domain is uh, always been halal. Uh, so so I, I may have a question for Sistema. Uh, that, that is, is Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, okay. Jeremy Ang. Okay. Yes. So, so, so uh, when we're dealing with this uh, future food, uh, what basically my organization, the Habara Singapore Private Limited, uh, we are actually the poultry breeding uh, technology company, right? Uh, so when, when, we, when we emphasize as a breeder, this is a relatively an upstream uh, supply chain uh, where the downstream, uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, we are looking towards having, you know, from breed 
to 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 the table uh, ensuring that you know the halal compliance and, and talking about pro greed and the whole entire part of a uh, uh, chain so right here uh, uh, from the presentation from uh, uh, Jeremy how do you look in terms of uh, such kind of uh, AI technology uh, we will be talking about blockchain uh, will be able to fit uh, in a kind of this uh, poetry uh, where you know uh, the, the experience that we had uh, uh, during our this uh, flagship in Myanmar uh, where, where, where we did our this uh, breeding a program and right now uh, we really have the kind of uh, cross breed with the uh, hybrid uh, with the local uh, breeds uh, there are needs uh, to, to really bring in the kind of uh, features of this uh, uh, modern technology and, and, and making sure that the whole entire part from end to end uh, to really be able to track like humidity, the temperature uh, with regard to the parameters uh, of our farm and, and, and so on. We, we, we have a major plan. Uh, we would like to roll this uh, to be uh, scalable and successful first uh, in Myanmar. And we are also uh, moving in into um, Malaysia. So I, I just like to connect with uh, Sistema uh, to, to really uh, look in terms of the whole entire ecosystem where in particular, uh, in particular, our breed is actually is uh, non-GMO. So we, we don't really use any form of a chemical injection and mm -hmm. like to make sure right from breed through the whole entire process till the point that, you know, point of uh, slaughtering, it is actually halal all the way. Uh, so. Uh, what's your comment uh, in this, uh, Jeremy? So, and, and I'm so looking forward that if I would be able to have my team uh, to explore some uh, possible, you know, exchange of the information so that, uh, I mean, to this uh, particular platform from Touch Group is something that, you know, uh, sure. as a Singapore company, you know, as a Singapore company, is something that, you know, we will be able to. Uh, and, 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 and this uh, as well, in the near future, I, I see uh, Versa, Versa Flip because uh, uh, Jeremy, uh, you know, it, I mean, just a little bit of uh, how I configure this. As a breeder, you know, we, we have right from the uh, uh, five uh, tier of the hierarchy. I mean, starting from the pure bread, and, and our capability is 600, uh, meaning to say 300 male and 300 uh, female of our breed, right, uh, going down to the second part of the generation. In three years down the road, in every month, we are able to actually uh, produce about 300 million of uh, chicken uh, in that uh, kind of uh, scalability. So, you, you will be able to imagine uh, what kind of ecosystem, uh, you know, with the halal compliance that we are moving into. So, uh, I would like to hear this. Uh, sure, Zuraimi. Actually, it's a full pledge. Yes. Uh, thanks, Asirat. Thanks, Asirat, sure, sure. for bringing them so, in. So, Zuraimi, I mean, uh, yeah. obviously, Jeremy has understood, uh, but Zuraimi has been on this project for some time. Uh, I've seen how it has progressed um, from Myanmar and the whole process that how Zuraimi mentioned, it's, uh, it's halal. It's halal verified, uh, so there's no issue about the halal verification. Uh, so I think, uh, Suraj, again, they have Suraj. a big farm, uh, not uh, just in. Yes, Suraj, uh, uh, the, the, the emphasis is not really. I'm I'm, I'm moving towards halal, but uh, it is really a non-GMO. So basically, right. a non-GMO. We, we don't believe in the chemical injection. We don't believe uh, in, in the part of uh, the antibiotics. We believe in what we have. And uh, our breeds basically will take on our local uh, uh, feed uh, that would be manifest uh, by us. So I think it's, it's more of that because uh, moving on this uh, future food vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis of protein, it is something that you know, we would like to preserve uh, you know, right. the conservation of this uh, protein and, and, and giving back to the whole entire global community that look uh, disease. <laughs> And and and, and so real can, organic. Yeah. All right, thank you, Jeremy. Let's, yeah, let's Jeremy, come on. Let's, uh, yeah. 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 Jeremy, yeah. Go on. let's um, share what your thoughts are. So I think uh, Jeremy and also all complex of question to be yeah, answered uh, in in this short call. Uh, I definitely will have to see your operations, the scale of your operations. Sure. And also, um, how relevant geospatial is going to be to your business? Um, we have worked with. Uh, one or two conglomerates uh, in Myanmar themselves, they do uh, heavy industrial machine listing, uh, leasing, and uh, they do use uh, some of our technologies from, from our companies. Um, but I'm not sure about how, how extensive it is uh, for your business, um, especially for logistics, uh, how big is your plant or your yeah. farm. Yeah. Um, 
but it's not uncommon to firstly have uh, IoT devices in your farms to monitor quality, to monitor sure. different uh, breeding conditions for your for your animals. Um, so that's that's first uh, first and foremost. Um, but for geospatial, I think it really depends. I need to take a look at your your business. Sure. Um, sure. Whether it's GMO or non-GMO, I think that's it's not really relevant for the yep. technology, but um, it's, it's the, the intricacies and the granularity of your processes and how that's going to help you. Correct. Process. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so maybe, uh, Siraj, uh, you know, if I can actually uh, connect with uh, Jeremy Ang uh, sure. uh, 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 after this, uh, I mean, if you can help to facilitate, I, I, I really appreciate that I can bring in my team. Uh, to yeah. have an audience with uh, Jeremy. Yeah. Okay, sure. Definitely. Let's, let's that keep can... this a Singapore initiative, uh, Siraj. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Definitely, we'll be yeah. more than happy to facilitate. And I do believe uh, you can actually get some benefit out of it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Zoraimi and Jeremy. Appreciate it. Okay. Anyone else? If not, I start asking questions. Sheikh, thank you so much again for joining us in your car. <laughs> okay, uh, Sheikh actually runs a co-sharing space. Uh, that's another area where I find uh, wh where's the next place that he should open or should he maintain the place that he's having? You know, again, these are a few, uh, few things that probably we can learn from uh, having land data. Are people moving a certain area? Are people moving away from a certain area? But before that, I'm just going to ask... Uh, Dean, Dean, good day. Also, yes, Dean. Now, uh, although I mentioned just now uh, about COVID nineteen not really affecting like people in the contactless industry, but what about versa fleet? Because you know, and I understand it's it's a, it's a whole uh, platform that manages logistics, uh, cargo tracking, and and, and uh, yeah, areas like cargo tracking. How does the COVID-19 issue affect uh, your business? Is there any effect? Is there any, anything, any effect on it? Yeah, in fact, uh, since, since COVID, uh, to be honest, the am amount of inquiries has improved, has increased because uh, a lot of companies are uh, looking to implement or looking to change the way that they are handling logistics, especially like you mentioned, the advent of uh, uh, contactless delivery. So uh, companies have been finding, trying to find creative ways to en enable this uh, contactless delivery. And I, I mean, it so happens that we got, so, uh, we got a few features that uh, enable this. So uh, during this COVID period, we really have been uh, quite busy uh, consulting as well as uh, implementing such solutions to different businesses like uh, the uh, companies. So, uh, I like to say that, I mean, we're kind of doing our part to help the, the nation uh, prevent the spread. La. <laughs> if that makes sense, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, thank you, Dean. I mean, uh, definitely it has affected quite a number of businesses, but I also believe it's how uh, we address these uh, adversities. Okay, thank you, Dean. Um, okay. Again, anytime you guys have questions, just shout it out. You know, you can put the Zoom chat, you can just shout it out. Uh, in fact, you can also even post on our Facebook where it's on live. Okay. Uh, someone say something? Yeah, pass on. Okay, no problem. But uh, if there's any question, do do share with us. Okay, I just didn't. I just I just didn't hear that. that. Can you hear? Okay, never mind, Pak. You can also type it out or you can WhatsApp us or you can... I can't hear. Anyone can hear? Or is it... I uh, cannot, huh? Okay, never mind, Pak. Hmm, later we try again, Pak. Oh, for all you know, Pak not talking to me, yeah? Talking to someone else. Okay, never mind. Anyway... <laughs> It happens at times, but I'm sure Pak is talking to me lah. Pak Sono is talking to me for sure. Okay, in any case, uh, 
Okay, I want to ask this question. Where are my questions? Okay, ah, uh, um, Jeremy. Jeremy, Jinju mentioned that I am wrong. Wow, I keep highlighting this part. Uh. Maybe I can't get over it. Uh. So he said this is not the future, this is the current thing. And the future is something else. Okay, so uh, you, you just can share a bit and then we we'll go to Jinju after this for sure. <laughs> is this going to be a fast phase? Them or quick phase? That means, you know, before you know it, we already go to the next phase. Uh, for example, like um, when we look at 2G, 3G and uh, 4G, 5G. Yeah? So I think the, the, the technology at 2G was quite long. 3G was also quite okay. But 4G was quite fast. Before you get the hang of 4G, and we're talking about Singapore, that means you're talking about maybe some parts of the world haven't even embarked on 4G yet. Uh, but then now it's really 5G. So I think 4G phase is quite fast. So what about this phase about, you know, uh, drones and um, and whatever you have over here now? Is it going to okay. be a fast phase or a quick one? Or okay. are we moving so forward? Uh, I think I think a, a good way to answer this question is to separate 5G conversation with uh, drones. So for 5G, why 5G is perhaps taking slightly longer than 4G is mainly because of hardware. Um, for 5G, once you go to that kind of spectrum level, um, your hardware has totally changed. So that's why Huawei, companies like Huawei has a monopoly in, in many places in the world because they have been able to produce that sort of hardware at scale and at a very affordable price. Um, that's that's the, the bottleneck for 5G. But for uh, drone technology, for example, the, the bottleneck is usually at the regulations level, the government level. Um, I think, I think uh, as a progressive uh, development into that space, um, the government has to be slightly more liberal, uh, more open to experiment more of these technologies. But then again, they are tied down because now it's things in the air that might drop down or you don't know, right? You fly into an aerodrome, um, you have problems. I, I personally flew for uh, in the Air Force before and I fly FPV drones. So I do know a little bit about air law <laughs> and it's, it's problematic. So I think Jinju uh, will, will have a, a better idea. Um, so, and, and, and you're talking about the, the, the thing that uh, Jinju was talking about, uh, flying out of line of sight. So that's, that's a problem. Um, because for FPV, first person kind of uh, uh, flying, you can see in your goggles, but, um, or even uh, industrial drones that are flying way further away, kilometers away, you can see it still on a computer screen. But there is uh, a risk or additional risk factors coming in because of that. And, and I think government is still um, taking the, uh, the stance of what's the next evil, right? Uh, for, for development. So I think on that front, it's still going to take a while. But um, I think as long as drones start to solve very, very urgent problems, very pressing problems, and the solution is more than, we're not talking about 20% improvement in the process. We're talking about five times, 10 times, the amount of efficiency, I think that's when uh, drone technology will really take off. And I think it's a combination of a lot of factors. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jeremy, uh, for, for the insightful response. Uh, okay, so like how I mentioned, I'm going over to Jinju. So over here, <laughs> okay, not about that, I got over, hopefully I got over here, but no, the whole <laughs> idea is okay, over here. I wanted to share this uh, this screen. And also a bit on whereby just now Jeremy was showing this drone that can look at people's helmets and, and stuff like that, CCTVs. Yep. Okay, just going to share screen over here. Uh, wait, uh, let me, before I share screen, I better change the Chrome tab because that shows my WhatsApp. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, this is the tab. So I'm going to share. Okay, guys. See, I, I know you might find it unbelievable, but I do read quite a bit now when I got the time. Lah. So this is my favorite uh, author, James Patterson. And is there, did they say when they published this? Ah, 2017. Oh, that's an audio book. So probably about that time, ah, 2017. And this book actually, it's a, it's a, it's a fictional book. Ah. It's, a, it's fiction. It's called The Store. Now this, 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 this story book, The Store, it's about these drones and a, a whole city 
that has drones and they can deliver whatever you want just by like looking out and like, hey drone, um, and they call it a store. Lah. A store, I need salt. And the drone talk. And they come back and give you the salt. But as usual, there must be a twist. Lah, you know, so in this book, the twist is the store has got more secrets than it should have. The store has got, uh, controls your life. Because it becomes like very intrusive. Intrusive, it's there. It's monitoring you. Then there's like got a, a, some of them are working for the store. And so they have uh, those recording devices, you know, and they, you know, the, the, the store is actually watching whatever you are doing. Again, like how I mentioned just now, um, so you guys like really can get this book from the library. Uh, I got it from the library too. Uh, let me just stop the sharing first. So looking at that, and I would want to say what is the future or what is current <laughs> because it could happen. It could happen, you see. Will yes. we ever face a day like that where right. our privacy, what privacy? Correct. So, okay, so firstly, again, you're, you're not wrong. Maybe I just shouldn't say that. Uh, I think <laughs> it's also partially our fault because our tagline, we sometimes, sometimes we put building the future of drone technologies. We, we use the word future a lot. <laughs> Maybe you saw that. Uh, uh, so, so it's not wrong in the sense that, and, and I, uh, I want to kind of double emphasize what uh, Jeremy said just now, which is very important, right? Uh, I don't use the word help back, but the regulators in the aviation industry is very careful. And to them, safety always comes first. Right, so it, you you can have the most advanced things. Even if you give a hundred x improvement, if it if it de degrades safety, the answer is no. Right, so uh, we have we've just went through this whole thing with the PMDs line in Singapore, like you don't know lah. They have been banning PMDs left, right, center because of safety. It's not to do. It's not to say that the PMDs don't help the grab drivers to deliver food better and all this. It's the safety. We have, we have not designed the road to have PMDs basically, right? So today's air law does not allow for drones to exist in a very nice way. That's why I say low altitude airspace management, right? At a certain altitude, we can cut off and say, above this, everything is Air Force, right? But below this, please don't fly your F-15 100 meters above the ground. Your F-15 100 meters above the ground is very loud and <laughs> please stay away. But if we can, we can draw that line, right? Then we can have a separate set of rules. That's what I, what I was trying to say earlier, okay? So just, just to clarify the, the earlier point. But to your specific question, which is, uh, the store, right? Uh, again, it's the same question that I, I get a lot, right? And I, I was answer the same thing. What future? You don't think Amazon is doing this today? <laughs> right? You, you, you have all your what, uh, Siri at home, whatever things are all listening to you, what they're doing. Uh, you look at, just go to the Google patent search, right? And just search for drone patents that Amazon have. They have been patenting left, right, center, every single thing about drones delivering to your house, I think those patents are a lot more sci-fi than the book you just read. Seriously, just go and read that, right? So, so it, I, to me, it's, they, they're ready as well, right? It's again, maybe like you said, parked in the shelf somewhere, right? Waiting for the FAA in the US to say, okay, now we can do it, right? Uh, and, and the technology is available. Now, it's actually a lot, it's very important for us as the public, right? As citizens also to, to then have a say in this, right? Do we want to have uh, the store looking after us? We ourselves, we're not very active in e-commerce for now, right? We do have a lot of trials going on, if I can, cannot disclose right now, but, but in terms of publicly, right, we have not been uh, uh, doing a lot of work on the e-commerce side. But I can share about privacy in the domains that we are active in. Take, for example, the example I just gave just now, right, which is we help uh, BCA, HDB in Singapore to inspect buildings, right? So we fly around the buildings, we find cracks, falling concrete, uh, water leaks and all this, right? even falling objects. Anything that a building instructor traditionally will use a cherry picker or to or hang a gondola to inspect, we will be inspecting with drones. There's a new law in Singapore coming up soon to say that buildings, I think beyond six years, must be inspected twice every year with a drone. And we are one of those four other companies who are actually doing this right now. Okay. As you can imagine, if you're going to fly drones around your house, the next thing is the police will get a lot of calls of people saying drones are watching me taking a bath, changing clothes, right? A whole bunch of other privacy concerns. It's the same, it's the same problems, right? So our AI, the first thing it does when it, the drones are flying, right? Actually, the, when the pilot is flying, he sees the drone from the ground or from wherever he's piloting, right? But from the screen that he sees, the first thing our system do is to mask away windows. So automatically in our live streaming feed, we do not see windows at all. All windows become a black box, 
Okay, because that's actually anyway not what the, the authorities are looking for. They are looking for the cracks of the building. You need to maintain those buildings because they are essentially public public uh, driven, right? So I, I, I'm very confident that if the problem statements are well specified, the technology that's required to solve those privacy problems can be put to the fore. A large part of privacy issues are driven by social media and the hysterical, like, oh no, the drones are coming, that, that, kind, of, that kind of feedback. And, and sometimes I feel yeah, we are also part, part of the equation, right? We also have to put out enough education to the market and what, like what I'm doing now, which is to a group of you, thanks for listening, right? But also to the bigger market and say, look, we are not able to identify you, right? The latest project that we went live with the National Parks of Singapore was to do crowd distancing, right? The, it's, this safe distancing is important. We have a law that says no five people, needs, uh, can, no more than five people can crowd together in the park. And they also have a website called Safe Distance at Park who advise you that this park is crowded, that park is not crowded. So they are flying it regularly. We are not even the ones flying the drone, right? So the MParks people are flying the drones, streaming in video, right? The first thing we do again is we have to make sure that the video comes in we have no way of for us to know who the person is. So you're not able to see enough features like on your face and your, on your mouth and all these things to be able to recognize, ah, this is Siraj uh, bus, uh, sunbathing in ECP, right? We will not be able to say that. But we have enough information to say this is a person. So we can count one, two, three, four, five, satu, dua, tiga, right? If we can count, we can solve a policy problem. And that, that's why it's valuable. So, so you draw a line, the value is there, the value is, Let's go and find where the crowds are and disperse them as soon as possible or, or find them if, you, if, if it needs be. But on the other hand, we assure you that in the system, there's no way for us to know who you are because we are flying so far away. Okay? So, so once we find that balance, uh, whichever, whichever uh, industry we are in, I'm sure the privacy concerns can be allayed uh, with the public. Yeah. I hope that kind of answers the question because it's, it's very hard to solve the, the store problem which is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, until we are Amazon, it's actually very, very, quite, quite, quite challenging. Yeah. Yeah. What what you say is true, and uh, in fact, when when I asked the question and you asked me back, um, mm. has it not been happening today? Uh, that's that's a very <laughs> very good comeback, you know. And I totally believe that it is happening. In fact, more than ever before, in various forms that we do not actually see. Yep. Yeah. So okay. Um, thank you so much, Jinju. As we go along, um, I think, okay, just, just before I go on to uh, the budget, I think it's more about, then, more than ever, ethics come to play. Yes. Yeah. It is, uh, I think, from the pandemic to what we are facing today in businesses and all these things, it's really the biggest challenge uh, to human or mankind humanity, whereby, what are your values? At this point, what are your values? So, yeah, the pandemic, you know, and things like that makes us think. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a time to actually, uh, whereby you can be ruthless, you can be, you know, you can jack up prices of masks or stuff like that. But it's also a time where, um, you, a test of your ethics. Okay, I'm, uh, all right, our brother Kamal actually also can, uh, Interested in piloting this drone tech in Jakarta? Let me know. Okay, thank you, Kamal. This is what I want. Huh? When you see there is an opportunity, just shout out. Yeah. Don't sit over there. Just put your number. You might never know there is an opportunity. I will follow up after that also. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Before, uh, my yes. name is Kamal. Yeah, share a few words. Hello, my name is Kamal. I am from Jakarta. Uh, what I say to you before is just like a... I don't know, maybe you call it clickbait, but it's not a clickbait because in Jakarta, we currently doesn't have any uh, like that high-tech drone technologies that can deliver uh, goods from A to Z, from A to B, things like that. Uh, because we, we, how do I say, maybe our people hasn't, uh, hasn't been terbiasa, terbiasa apa yang bahasa Inggrisnya ya? Common. Yeah, common, commonly used to this practice because to trust the online business, now we get projected so much higher now for the online business selling. For this drone technologies, what do you guys think to be uh, projected in Jakarta? Because Jakarta, as you see, is so 
dense in population and the online selling, let's say, you know Gojek, right? And Grab. Yes. There are yes. two companies, it's not only Unicorn now, it's Decacorn. They are okay. so big because they can deliver from A to B with a uh, efficient and uh, more economical than any other counterparts with their Gojek, with their, uh, I don't know, Grab scooter or Grab um, Speda. They do a lot of things with Grab car as well. But now, yeah. currently due to the pandemics, they are dropping on the sales, but we don't know. Uh, we, yeah. let's, let's just put that aside. We don't know. W what do you think about piloting this project in, specifically in Jakarta? Because Jakarta is so yeah. unique. Yes. We have, uh, it, before the pandemic, mm. uh, there is 20 million every day in Jakarta itself. Yes. So in, in, a, in a daylight, it could be 40 million. Yeah. 40. Those yeah. 20 go outside of yeah. Jakarta to sleep. You, you get yeah. what I mean, right? So yeah. it's the, the market is hugely populated. And uh, yeah. Alhamdulillah, uh, last Saturday, I do I do a bit of uh, 2D or 3D mapping with the drone as well. Uh, it's not easy to do to do a mapping with drone for just one area. So I don't know if you want to do it in Jakarta as how, I don't know because the DJI I don't know the, the technology of the DJI maybe already already have that technology whether you can uh, fly it to this area whether you cannot fly this to that area and then whether you can uh, fly the drone, how high you can fly the drone with this zone. Let's say yellow zone. Yellow zone only allow you to fly above two kilometers, if I'm not mistaken. There's red, yellow, and green zone. And if you're near to Alim Perdana, Kusuma, or Cengkadeng, you cannot fly high because there's a possibility you might be crashed with the uh, with, uh, airplane. Also in the dense population, there are many kids who plays, you know, layangan. I don't know yeah, how you call kites. it in <laughs> layangan. Kites, kites, yes, kites. It's also one problem in dense populated area. To to apply this in Jakarta, actually, we have so many potentials. Let's say we started in like Sudirman or a Menteng area where the people are not playing kites or things like that, and the people are already uh, well mannered. Um, if yeah. I have to say it properly, can pilot it in that area. But I don't know. What do you think about that? What do you think about Jakarta? Sure. Sure. Oh, there any the, possibilities? Yeah. Because, you, you because the, pardon, I, I, last, 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 last sentence from me. Uh, because you guys located in Batam or Block 71. And mm -hmm. I already know uh, uh, about companies who is located in Batam or Block 71. They have a plus minus in there. I don't know uh, about the. I, I, I don't want to say anything, but <laughs> is it in Batam or Block 71? Let's just stop with that. And Mr. Okay. Ginger, yeah. I think so you want to answer, stop. Yeah. So let me answer it one by one, right? So maybe I'll go back. Okay. 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 So the, the first point is that uh, actually my guys are from Jakarta. They are just based in Batam. Uh, however, because of the pandemic, they're actually back in Jakarta now. So in fact, you might even see them in town. Uh, that's that's okay. part one, right? The other part is that um, uh, we we do want to go to Indonesia. It's actually very hard to get into Indonesia even before the pandemic, right? So now it's even harder to travel into Indonesia. Okay. Uh, so while while we while you're saying you know whether Jakarta is a use case, it's been a use case for us for many years, right? Just that we have not found a way in. We know the use the use case very well. The everyone's coming back to tell us the same problem. It's all about traffic jam, and I need to get from point to point B in the sky because yes, I cannot get past yes. the traffic. Yes, I, yes. I, I hear you, right? The, the yes. million, forty million. Yes, of course. Of but course. at the same time, right? At the same time, the 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 rules, right? The the regulators themselves, right? Also need to play ball. Okay, I give okay. you a few, a few reasons why this is not working out very well so far. You've been mentioning what red zone, yellow zone, green zone, right? Do you know that a lot of these things are actually invented by the Chinese in China? They don't even read the laws in Indonesia. So you might be following okay. the wrong law. DJI okay. might tell you that you can do something here when actually the Indonesian government says you cannot do it. Whereas, and then you have the other way around. You can try to compare basically the apps that uh, DJI give and you try to compare with whatever apps you have locally, built by a local developer based on the local laws. They're different because we found that the hardware ourselves, right? So today, provide the laws of Singapore 
to global uh, UTM systems like AMAP to inform them this is how yeah. the law is supposed to be like. But when you look at the DJI app in Singapore, yeah. Salah, you, you, you can't be depend everything on the DJI piece unless they have the right okay. consultant who understands it. Okay, so that's part one. The oh. government themselves translate the law into English or Chinese or something that can be read and people refuse to pass it and uh, adopt the law. That's part one. But part two, there's also no enforcement. Right? You, you say you've been flying around doing all the mapping and all this. What altitude did you fly? Right? Did, you, did anybody catch you if you do something wrong? No, right? So if there's no enforcement, there's also not going to, there's also not going to be any uh, business that's going to risk it. Right? The part about regulation yeah, yeah, yeah. is this. are actually very for regulation. So regulation is there to protect the interests of the people. We want safety okay. to protect everyone's interests, right? So if you have regulation, yeah, yeah, yeah. then you have that the people who can fly are legal and they take care of your safety. The same reason why when you drive a car today, you need insurance, you need to make sure that the, the people, the Toyota, yes, yes, the Honda, yes. will make the car exactly. safety, safety, right? So that exactly. is still missing for the drone country. That's it. It's not that Indonesia is not doing anything, right? So if you look at if you've been reading the, the news from companies as our namesake, like, which is the airline, right? Oh, yeah, so they have yeah, been yeah. buying yeah. yeah, they have been buying Chinese drones, but they're not testing in Jakarta itself. They are flying into the island. Because right? Garuda, so Garuda, Garuda is in a in lot of trouble. Sorry, I have to cut you. Garuda is in a lot of trouble. That's okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, 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 sorry, I don't know. Sorry but to I, spoil I it, but, but it's all in the news. Garuda is in so yeah. much trouble. Yeah. Of restructuring. It's very, yeah. it's very important understand the use case, right? Why did Garuda Indonesia choose to pilot all these things in the islands first? It's because if you, if you straight away test it in the city, it's dangerous. It's a safety problem, right? Yeah. But if you, in, if you test it in the island, it's the island hopping problem, right? Then maybe from there, you learn slowly, slowly how to come to a oh. suburban thing, right? So if you come and straight away, tell me, Juju, I want to solve Jakarta problem. I only care about Jakarta because that's where all 40 million people are. It is bucking up the wrong tree, right? It's, it's banging the head against the wall when no one else has already has figured out how to do it in the first place, right? So you try okay. to solve the okay. problem. I get you. First, more uh, relevant first, right? So that's, that's kind of the summary of all the questions you asked. Yeah, very good, very good. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, very, very good. Let, can I ask one more question? Uh, let's get the question from Pak Sono first and then we come back to... Ah, okay, uh, okay, it's okay. Also Thank you, Ginger. You really... Thank you, Siraj. No problem, no problem. When you have highlighted that, Pak Sono is also asking for Indonesia and also Singapore, whereby uh, Pak Sono is our trade attache from Indonesian Embassy to Singapore. Uh, the embassy is at Chatsworth Drive. So, uh, because I think there's some um, issues with technical, uh, some technical issues. So I'm just going to read out the question by uh, Pak Sono. So basically, one of the question is drones delivering food. You know, uh, how does it work in crowded buildings, uh, especially in our CBD in Singapore and also in like in Indonesia where the, the density is very high? Uh, you know, how, how, how do you control space and drones? And we're not talking about one drone out. Yep. You're talking about many drones out. It's like, can, can, will it be envi envision a, a drone, food delivery drones, as many as food delivering motorcycles? Yeah. Uh, if, it, if that's going to be, how do you manage that flow? Yeah, so that's so, the so, question from part. Yeah, so there are three separate parts of the questions again, right? So the first part is really, uh, I would call it the economic part, right? How much does it cost today that you pay Gojek to get your food delivered? Okay. Today, I cannot deliver at that price. I can tell you, given the, the, the amount, my drones are $50,000, right? So how, how do I make sure that, that that amount is amortized over thousands and thousands of delivery? I don't have the economics yet, right? So I, I think a lot of companies will also not have the economics. But however, this will be, this will be commoditized, right? According to how, how uh, the, the market is. Okay, this is part one, so economics. The other question is more about infrastructure. Drones eventually are just aircrafts. Aircrafts always have a place to take off and a place to land. All right? So if you, if you need to have as many drones, as say motorbike, motorbikes have that many parking spots. Can. So then that many parking spots is required for drones. Right? So there's a, there's a simple, there's a simple ex, ex, extrapolation. Right? You can't have just motorbikes on the road and the road not going anywhere. Right? They eventually be parked somewhere. So you can imagine if all our roofs are converted. Right? There's, there's an infrastructure investment right? where, you can in, where you can change all the rules to become drone landing spots. That's possible. But that's a very in, uh, expensive investment. 
right? And that's again the same reason why a lot of these drone deliveries, even the, the Google Wings in US uh, or in Australia and all this, they are testing it in the suburbs where they land in the front porch, right? In the in the in the garden, uh, right, of the of the person or something, right? Where it's that is possible to just land there without setting up infrastructure. In Singapore, we are setting up infrastructure. We are literally building drone pods, right? Where the pods are it can be as simple as just a piece of land, but we have to make sure that we, we fence it out. We must put little signboards that says drone in operation, stay clear, keep out, keep out, or things like that. Right? Maybe queue poles. Uh, sometimes we need to add, add extra bandwidth for, for network connectivity. We need to put uh, weather meters to make sure that it's not raining and so on. And the more advanced ones, they will build a box. Right? So if you look at, say, China, uh, one popular company is called Antworks. Right? So A-N-T-W-R-K-S. So Antworks, for example, they build a port. Right? And that port is for delivery. Can you write delivery. it? Uh, can I write it? Okay. Pardon. And work. Right? I think it's something like that. Yeah, so you can search the internet and you should be able to see it. Right? So, so and work, for example, they, they have a pod. So, so that pod is also itself is better proof thing. You can put something inside, the thing will be picked up and then they'll fly and then come back. Right? So they've done 20,000 flights. In Singapore, we have, uh, we have an equivalent thing by Airbus. Airbus have a sky, Skyways, but they have not done 20,000 flights yet. They have much less flight. Uh, but China being China, they've already done a lot, a lot of flights to prove that this thing works. Same question when I spoke to the founder. He said, even at 20,000 flights, I cannot make back the money I invested. I still need more people to buy more food from the drones before I can actually solve the, the, the economics problem. Okay, so that's the second part. The third part is the one that's actually related to the talk I gave just now. Right? To get to that kind of volume, you need to have decided, for example, 30 meters in the sky is going north, 40 meters in the sky is going south. So that the, the, the drones and the, uh, are flying the sky like cars going on the road, right? It, most of you have watched Star Wars before, right? Star Wars, you know, sometimes they, they do show like flying objects. They're always queuing up, right? You notice the Star Wars, the Star Wars of, of, uh, uh, vehicle, uh, aircrafts, right? They, they don't fly random places. That's only when they're fighting, right? In a safe environment, when it's a futuristic city, they're actually in roads in the sky, right? In, in, in certain tiers. For the reason, because you have to manage the airspace. So someone has to decide where the skyway is, where the roads are. So one is a, a, a regulation or a virtual construct of law, infrastructure that needs to be in. One is a physical infrastructure that needs to be in. And finally, the dollars, right? The, the vote for need for food delivery must happen. So many things have to come together before this is going to become a reality. Uh, we believe it's going to happen, but which one comes out first depends on who is who is betting first, lah, right? Who is so we are we are only creating the technology. I think the technology is the one running the fastest now. The technology is ready, yeah. So uh, you, yeah, so Skyway is the one that uh, the project for uh, that uh, Airbus calls their project Skyway, right? So the same similar concepts, right? You imagine cylinders in the sky where you cannot get out of. Yeah. Okay. Right. So so in the summary, right? Basically, you have to you have to put a stick out there. So we put the technology stick out there. Someone has to say, okay, use my roof. So some of the, my customers, what they're offering us is use my campus. Maybe it's a university or something. Use my campus. Any roof you want me to convert in any way, you just convert it. <laughs> right? yeah. So, so we were, they, that's how we end up building drone pods for them. Right? Thanks. But thanks now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Jinjo. Okay. Uh, to wrap it up, Devajit, any words? The future. How fast will this happen? Um, you talk about geofencing. Another store, another actually a question that we also had in mind is cost. So it's all fancy now, you know. And I think uh, Jinjo, Jeremy, uh, even Dean, uh, we all have propagated uh, about the, the stuff about um, uh, geospatial drones, uh, all this technology. But the cost, the budget. What do you look at? How how do you look at that? Will it be something that is um, viable for the end user, or will it always be just a concept, like a concept car of like the BMW auto shows and stuff like that? So, will it be a BMW concept car, or will it be a three two O workhorse? Be optimist, bro. <laughs> That's summarize, lah, bro. Must be like that. So, Devaji, please. Yeah. So, um. You know, in terms of geofence, um, this is actually uh, our current evaluation is it is going to reduce the cost of operation between 60 and 70 percent. For example, we are talking about luggage tractor. So when you deposit your luggage, when you're flying, it goes from luggage belt to the side of the plane. That's a repeat route driven by a human. And you don't need that compulsive task to be driven by a human being. 
can, he or she can be released to do other more conceptual tasks, right? So if you talk about that, we were doing a calculation at Changi Airport, current cost of operation of a luggage tractor around the year is $96,000. With the solution that we are talking about, it would be more like $36,000. So there's a huge cost advantage. Unlike now, if you're talking about open road autonomy, the BMW concept car or something that people are going to have a personal car that is automated. I also don't believe that um, because we don't follow the dream and we do not know how that helps other than robotaxis, but robotaxis are at least 10 years away. And that's our view uh, because we have a lot of things, including regulations and all the things that people talked about needs to be solved before. Uh, so open road will have similar issues like uh, the drone companies and people are finding out. But as far as autonomous vehicle, I think unless in transportation, you solve safety or you solve cost, you have no chance. Then it's, you know, we are not a laboratory. I don't feel uh, we're doing it for the sake of showing the next technology. It's the business venture. Um, so geofence is a real business case. Sure. Thank you so much, Devajit. Um, I see lots of opportunities to be frank, especially if you have the interest, the, the people, the structure, and the purpose. The purpose is very clear today. Uh, that's, the, that's the in thing, uh, the future of things. And like, for example, I guess Skyways, Joe Fencing. These are things that are not yet, uh, not many people have paid much attention to it. Just this particular group. But if you are looking at infrastructure, I would say uh, developing infrastructure. The next infrastructure is probably the sky, uh, the skyway. The, 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 you know, the, how you how you regulate things. So okay, um, yeah, we are, we have actually reached uh, five o'clock, and that's how we always um, emphasize that we actually uh, we don't take too much of everyone's time. But uh, okay, before we go any further, I'm just going to first of all say thank you so much for being here, taking time to actually uh, share your views, share some ideas. And this is what the whole idea is all about. We, I think, I've, at least for me, I've got a lot of information, a lot of knowledge. I'm sure it's also the same with uh, most of you guys. We can see lots of opportunities. We should discuss this even further in our group chats. Um, and so I thank our speakers. I thank Joe Works. I do like their Facebook page, get to know more about them. They actually, I think I'm going to do a quick share over here. Uh, quick share over here where, uh, let me see, where's the Joe Works page? Uh, it's the Garuda Robotics. Here. Yeah, so Joe Works page, do like, share and follow this page. And uh, over here, they do mention, say that we are pleased to announce the registration for um, Joe Spatial Week. This is mentioned by Jinju, I think, just now. Uh, the registration page is going to be open very soon. And once we have it, we're also going to share with all of you. So it's a whole week full of speakers and uh, sharing of ideas. There are almost 60 webinars. This is a virtual edition again. Um, I know they wanted a, a, a physical session uh, so much, but again, with all these uh, safe measures, it doesn't make much sense to have a, a physical version. So um, on top of that, uh, thank you so much for, for your support. Do also uh, share our page, uh, like, follow, because you, you can also uh, catch the live version, uh, which will be recorded later on and you can just click on it. Okay, guys, uh, so what we always do is, at any point of time, just continue our discussions. Again, I'm not going to end this. Uh, let me just, I'm just going to end the share. And uh, again, I thank our speakers. If our speakers need to go off, uh, I totally understand. Or anyone needs to go off, please, I understand. But if anyone wants to stay, uh, have a bit of a chat, catch up, you know, uh, do do continue to, to be here. Again, I am, uh, thank you so much for SMCCI for their support uh, of this event. Appreciate it uh, from Fahana and I also know their, their, 
Honorary Secretary uh, Fazli Manso also uh, was attending it. Uh, to our partners from Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, uh, we appreciate it a lot. Uh, and also to the team at Torch, you know, I'm just the front guy who is uh, assigned to talk today. Uh, but the guys behind me, they, they work tirelessly. Lah. Appreciate it much. So guys, yes, any, 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 any thoughts, any views? Sheikh, where are you heading to, Sheikh? From front view, now you've got side view. Hello? <laughs> okay. Uh. No, I just, I just I had some appointment, so I'm not able to catch you earlier. Oh, yeah. you earlier. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, so in the, on the road, so I thought that's okay. Uh, on the thing. So I still got some time now. Yes, yes. I appreciate it. No, I mean, um, yeah, we, we covered a, a good topic over there just now, driverless vehicles. Again, things that um, I know you have a keen interest to see what you can do over in this new technology. But also at the same time, uh, uh, it's also interesting to, again, it's probably back to data, uh, uh, whereby now that the CB is now lifted to a certain extent. So meetings are, are, are back again, physical meetings, people are moving around. Uh, how does it affect our business? On the flip side, now. So you 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 were prepared for CB. You tried to be prepared for CB. The circuit breaker, the lockdown. Now things are opening up, and that's actually what's happening at Zoom networking. Because I, you know, I was saying, eh, how should we change a few things? Uh, I think our friend Ismail also, you know, uh, Sharin mentioned, uh, so timing and whatnot. So from from just a program, I want say just program, our, our own program, Zoom networking, to your own business. Things are constantly changing, although you know we have uh, this COVID-19 coming along, but uh, I think the changes are very rapid. And uh, we, we prepare for one thing, we must also prepare for the thing after that, the next thing. Okay, uh, but Sheikh, are you, are you looking at uh, setting up more workspaces in the future? The moment, you no, know, it's just that I'm um, uh, targeting different uh, market now. Actually, I'm packaging like things more. For I mean, like working from home is gonna be more widely accepted. Yes, yes. So even though there's some, uh, I mean, there's definitely pros and cons of it, but it could be widely accepted now. Uh, so now I'm targeting market whereby uh, companies or teams that work from home. But uh, once in a while, they need a space to gather. I mean, still, it's about uh, team, team uh, physical energy, right? Because yeah. everybody work from home. It doesn't really, it, it cannot sustain without really meeting. Uh, the, right. to, to make work, work from home sustainable, I think the companies need to arrange a uh, location whereby then the team needs to meet maybe once a week, what uh, bi-weekly or monthly, so to meet, to work, to discuss. Uh, so I think that is now what I'm targeting, uh, this kind of market. Mm -hmm. So I'm setting up my office or so. Like previously, I'm actually having more small uh, cubicles. So now I'm, I'm, I'm modifying to change it to a bigger space where a team of like uh, 10 to 15 can come. So they, they have a big a room, then plus another discussion room. So I sell in package of, uh, depending on their needs. So, so far, Alhamdulillah, got two clients that's working on this kind of uh, need. So that's where I'm going into. But I think co-working is this. We are out of CB here. Uh, at least, like, we should look, I know, I mean, guys at Jakarta, we can always have a video camera or something like that. But everywhere, we have a, a few of our Zoom networking members. Even in Jakarta, we've got a few of us over there. In Southern Thai, we've got a few others over there. We should actually organize some trips, you know. Like, for example, uh, Sheikh having an, uh, uh, a workspace. Probably we can all, I mean, uh, those who are in Singapore, those who are in Singapore can make a trip to Sheikh's place, you know. Check it out. Have a. Have oh, yeah. Free, free I, I said, okay, I'm so sorry, but then I'm used to that. <laughs> I know you won't take heart to it. 
So, you know, we go and meet Sheikh, you know, go and visit Sheikh's place, what's, what's happening over there, how can we contribute, how can, you know, sometimes it's not just contribute, we actually benefit from Sheikh's place. Now, every time, every Wednesday, you know, at Sheikh, oh, easy, go workspace. Ah, okay, la, this guy doing workspace. But we, I think we, we might need to make a trip. Like, for example, there was this other guy who is also my neighbor, uh, G Fit, I think, uh, he's a gym trainer. So, you know, uh, now that the gyms are open, we can probably visit and uh, have a look what, what kind of packages he have or, or how we can actually, he can actually have a session for us to keep fit. So, no, like, actually, I previously I extended to SMCCIs that you guys who have uh, events or networking session, I give my space for free. So, uh, if you guys uh, wants to use, just let me know. Just give me a shout. Yeah, the space available, inshallah, I can give you all for free, no problem. Inshallah, thank you so much for your generosity. So you see, from this, there's also an ecosystem happening now. See, Sheikh looks here, he has something, he is sharing something, you know, where all of us can benefit, you know, in fact, I don't know, maybe the next Zoom session or in the future, where we can do it at Sheikh's place. And then we have a, a projector or a screen. We can sort out the technical things and then do yeah, it. Can, right. can and then we can have problem. everyone on a, in a different space and we can have the Singaporeans together or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, um, sure. again, like for example, Kamal, thank you for saying, you know, Kamal also is a very good person who is in, uh, in terms of incorporating Indonesian companies, um, you know, the whole works, you know, your PT, PT, PT PMR. Uh, he's the right guy. He, he knows the stuff. So this is where also a potential collaboration where Kamal and Shea probably can work together. Again, on a smaller basis, that's slowly we grow, whereby, you know, uh, the, the co-working spaces, because it's co-related. You have a space, True. you have to set up a company and YC versa. As Kamal, yeah, you switch on your mic really. So Kamal. Yeah, uh, in Jakarta now, the co-working space is like, uh, we call it Banting Harga, you know? They are yeah. selling at very discount price. Even I cannot tell you how many price I got for uh, one PT even that want to boys, set up. Even the big what? boys, even the big boys like we work and uh, the big names, are they also bunting? Some harga? of them, some of them are uh, adding the price, but some of them are very lowering the price, and that is the most of the most of them. You know, maybe international company like we call it. Do you know Regis? R E G U S. Regis is increasing. Because maybe globally, they are uh, forced to increase their uh, balance. But for the local, local co-working space, I found one or two or three. They are very discounting their co-working space price. For let's say, I can negotiate until like three months for one year. But that's only for the virtual office related. And that's, there's also a star in there. Not including this, not including that, but maybe I can negotiate on that. But they're very discounting on this working space as well because nobody comes to the office now. That's on their mind. So how to save the company by attracting more customers and then they are lowering their price significantly. And that's, uh, I don't know how you call it. For me, it's an opportunity for, uh, for my client, also an opportunity to uh, expand your business. But... For their business, for the co-working business perspective, it's not good for them. But for my perspective, it's good. But I don't know how it happened in other countries or maybe in Singapore, let's say, or in Malaysia. I don't. Know. Okay, okay, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of, lot of local co-working space are highly discounted their price from, let's say, last year, more than fifty percent cut price. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Come on, are you still in the WhatsApp group? Yeah, I'm of course, of course. But I'm not I'm not able to keep in touch to all the chat. I'm so no, sorry. It's okay, because, it's okay, it's okay. So it's yeah. okay, if can... it's important, if it's important, Zaha, Zaha, thank you, Zaha. Also, <laughs> always like uh told me in specific times, but I cannot join all the meeting. I want to, but I cannot always. <laughs> no, I I'm so sorry. Thank you, come I on. love this meeting. I love this meeting actually. Yeah. This is a very insightful meeting. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you Kamal. Thank you. I've not really met uh, Madam Fatima from is that PFN Malaysia. Or Hello, it? Madam Fatima. It's my yeah. first time. Well, first Hello. time. Okay, that's why I see. Yeah, I don't really. 
Hello Fatima, maybe you can share a few words or anything you can speak Malay also up to you, no worries, just Malay. Yeah, okay, first of all, thank you for having me today in the meeting. Hello. Uh, well, I have to be honest with you, I'm not really familiar with this geotech uh, stuff. You know, uh, so I'm not up to date with all this technology, but I'm very interested uh, with whatever uh, discussion that related to to business. I've been brought in here by Mr. Zaha, and uh, I would love to learn more from this group. Thank you. Great, great, great. Pardon, Thank pardon. May, may I ask what is a PFN? Oh, PFN is my company. It's a Palmyra Food Network. Oh. I'm involved in the food manufacturing. Okay, thank you. What kind of food? Uh, we're doing ready-to-eat paste, sambal, mm -hmm. uh, uh, achar, and also uh, spices, spices in powder form. Oh, where's your factory? Oh. Uh, it's in nice. Sinawang. Yeah. Sino. Nice, Sinawang. nice. Sinawang, Negeri Sembilan. Negeri Sembilan. Ah, yelah, yelah. Betul dah dekat dah, Negeri Sembilan. Yes. Okay, uh... Yes, thank you so much, and we hope you you join us in the future. Hopefully, uh, thank you. Yes, we'll do. Appreciate it a lot. Uh, can I can I ask for the next uh, topics? Yeah, in private chat to you, Siraj. Okay, okay, sure, sure. Please propose. And this is very important for Indonesian, and it's uh, an opportunity for you guys. Great for, great, great. for all of you guys outside of Indonesia. For sure. But I will I will talk in private chat with you. Eh? It's okay. Eh? Sure, buddy. All right, enjoy your call. Thank you. I wish I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Panuman, how are you, Mr. Panuman? Al Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, no, I'm fine, cool. thank, thank you. you. Yeah, <laughs> when just now the Versal fleet was saying about uh, 4G, I don't know 4G, they were saying that their technology can also. They have tested their technology. It can also uh, be implemented in areas with low network uh, ability. And that's why I find that if, as we go along, it's not about the network capability of the city. It's whether the apps or the tech can adapt to that. Mm. Yeah, because you want to wait for the whole country to upgrade the technology in certain cities, it might take some time. It's always also a political move. Uh, okay, thank you, Sharifuddin. Sorry, thank you, Sharifuddin, for coming and joining us. Appreciate it. Okay, so, but also for the apps to adapt because the few, the bigger population of the world doesn't have strong internet. In fact, um, there are certain times where Singapore ourselves have internet outage. You know, our internet is down, you know, and things like that. Although somehow the news doesn't go out of the country. Lah. Okay, so... I do hope, uh, Mr. Panuma, you know, let's let's look at uh, certain areas like this also because I find when they are talking, it's also a way whereby boosting tourism because again, over there in uh, Narati, what lots of sites to see, lots of places to see, but sometimes, you know, you can't uh, access them easily. And if you want me to climb over the hill just because there's a viewer, you must show me the view first. That's the story, right? Yeah, yeah. If you don't show me the view, I won't climb the tree. I won't climb the hill because I'm just too tired. But you say, hey, Siraj, on top, uh, there is, look at this waterfall. And then I'll be more than happy. I'll say, okay. So that's where, in fact, untouched places, not say untouched, but lesser developed, yeah. untouched places and narrative what provides, it's like a clean sheet of paper. You know? So when you talk about about geotechnology, when you talk about mapping it back again, you know, on the online version, it's easier than in the, you know, in Singapore, in Jakarta, where it's very dense. You know, things are changing. Suddenly, there's one building in the middle of the city. You know, tomorrow, there's another site building. Uh, but for, for it's, it's something for even like Narati Wat to, to look at. And probably, probably guys in the future, so we will, we will, I will have a chat with Kai and Zaha and all that. And then maybe some of uh, you, we can again uh, discuss again, highlight to you. And then we can have uh, another session with uh, Joe, uh, SLA, Joe Works, for Singapore Land Authority, where we can see future uh, opportunities uh, and whether they want to come. Or may, I don't know. I mean, nowadays in Singapore, all the government agencies, let me check first, are they all here or not? No more here, okay? 
to the government agencies um, commercializing in a way. So they want to go out, they will go out and they will actually offer some services and then see what they can get in return. You know, they're not just focused on Singapore only. Okay, thank you, Mr. Parumat. Uh, Azuni, thanks for joining us, Azuni, today. Uh, Ms. Azuni, appreciate it a lot. Again, I do not know, maybe my memory is failing, but probably you have been around here, but I've, um, I, can't, I can't remember what, what you actually do. Ms. Azuni, maybe you can share a bit. Azuni from Kelantan, right? Ah, Where yes. Uh, I remember now. It is my second time. Ah, second time, okay. All right. So what do you do? Uh, what, what you uh, um, I'm at a technology people. Okay. Just ordinary. Oh, no uh, I'm doing uh, graphic design. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing a graphic design. Oh, graphic design. And wanted to explore. Yes. Uh, now I remember like, graphic design. Yeah, I thought I saw and uh, I think the team also uh, mentioned that you are into graphic design. So, graphic design, you, you do sell your, like, you know, we can engage you to do some of our posters or things like that? Or what kind uh, of design? Yes, you poster. Um, uh, actually, I have a small uh, shop before and then lakuan ni robokan kerana nak besarkan jalan. So, I just doing my job at my home. And now I am okay. looking for a new new things to explore, like uh, meniaga kecil-kecil seperti um, just a new new idea like uh, serunding, serunding ataupun ketupat. Uh, ketupat uh, uh, serunding, uh, serunding, serunding daging ataupun ketupat. Serunding. Serunding. Serunding kan? Serunding. Ah, serunding ah, lah. Ha, ha, serunding daging yeah. kan? Ah, ah, serunding daging. Ada serunding tak lah serunding daging kan? Serunding lah. <laughs> okay, okay. Kalau Indonesia tak apa lah serunding. Sama kan? Uh, Azhar? Dendeng eh? Is it dendeng, dendeng ah? Tak adalah. Kan? And then serunding. The next serunding we have. Ya, yeah, the yes. coconut plate uh, and the... Uh, with coconut coated yeah. in, the, in the dendeng. Uh. Apa namanya ya? Kamal? Dendeng, dendeng serunding. Dendeng juga lah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Ah, dendeng. Ah. I see. I see. So, maybe oh, okay, okay. Okay. Okay, kan Dan juga ketupat pun. Apa, banyak untung daripada buat graphic design ke? <laughs> tanya, I tanya. Ramai yang dah sekarang ni. Ram, sebenarnya, okay. Uh, nak bagi tahu okay. situasi sekarang ni ramai sangat. Um, yang buat graphic design. Ramai sangat. Ah, ya, okay. Ah, so oh, yang lah. ada macam miskera, like a instant noodles. So kena explore something new untuk um, untuk mencari lebih banyak lagi rezeki. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I mean, ke frozen. Betul. Uh, hmm. Whatever that puts food on the table lah. Pada saya masa sekarang hmm. ni zaman ini bukan zaman untuk memilih. Bukan zaman hmm. uh, apa tu nak macam say no uh, apa you rasa boleh ada rezeki ada rezeki halal why not you know cuba lah hmm. dan uh, insyaallah dengan niat ikhlas uh, there will be an opportunity in fact insyaallah uh, thank you thank you mungkin boleh link up eh, dengan siapa uh, Zah maybe boleh link up dengan okay boleh oh, ni dua kali punya ni eh. Kamal <laughs> so uh, maybe Pak Zaha boleh link up dengan Iman and then see how we can get some samples from Azuri you know I think that okay sure boleh ha, kan? boleh boleh share tapi hari ni hari ni tak boleh share lah nanti ah, tak kita tahu bila <laughs> ada expiry tak? ke ah, nak tukar uh, biasanya serunding ni dia tahan lama boleh taruh dalam fridge kan then lepas tu panaskan ah, boleh ah uh, macam ketupat frozen bila uh, nak bila kita want to eat lepas tu baru uh, kita akan masuk dalam kita punya air fryer boleh lah. ke. I think we can, we can try out eh kita kita ambil okay, uh, sure. kita berapa harga dia in fact like all this hmm. macam telefon Fatima pun you know kalau ada sample sample um, I think um, yeah talk to any one of us uh, myself Kai or Zaha uh, usually hmm. friends will know that it's easier to, to get to Kai or Zaha somehow uh, hmm. Yeah, it's it's a bit more difficult to find me, but uh, yeah. So antara sample then kita boleh cuba kita buat review, you know. Uh, then pasal kita kita tak kita tak ada end date. Ni pandemik ini border tak ada date yang 
Okay, December tu buka. Tak ada, dah tak ada date. Ini PKP pun saya tengok dah berapa minggu dah. Enam minggu, sebulan, tiga bulan, dah lima bulan pun. Dia tak ada cerita. Ini dua menteri pun berdiri mm-hmm. depan Cosway. Ambil gambar lah. Senang kata eh. Okay. Uh, jadi boleh buy sometime lah. This is standard lah eh. Kalau saya menteri pun saya buat tu macam. So, mm-hmm. itu tak apa. Kita tak boleh buat apa-apa. So, kita will have to get Uh, kita punya sampel going, online pun going you know. InsyaAllah uh, I think Pak Zaha and uh, Pak Kai also have uh, a program uh, whereby kita bawa masuk uh, our neighbors products into Singapore and how they go out again uh, pasal kita dah ada kolaborasi dengan apa uh, uh, apa depan kita, distribution center uh, distribution center uh, and then some online punya portal pun lah. InsyaAllah lah we'll share more in the future um, Okay, uh, yeah. so again, thank you so much to our other friends, uh, Pak Sonu, uh, Husni, Zaini, uh, Hussein, uh, Butias dan uh, Puan Salasya. Appreciate it. Uh, so I think I, any, any, any other comments, any other views? Alright guys, so keep in touch. Let's continue on on our WhatsApp group, okay? Alright. Pak Cik Zah, right. kalau siapa yang belum masuk, dia masukkanlah. InsyaAllah yang dah pernah datangkan. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bari. Bari. Syarif, Syarif. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Dah. Bye. <laughs> Facebook live still on. Syarame <laughs> ya. Can, can, can we close uh, live Facebook first <laughs> so we can have private conversation. <laughs>